Well, good evening, all. I wrap scene with your spider ETF stock market wrap up, and this wrap up is for Tuesday, and we are at the 8th of August, 2023, 5.45 p.m. Central Time. So we came in the terrible news today. Uh, China's slowdown is dramatic. It's export imports, if you're looking, uh, not good at all. They're making more money on their trade surplus uh, on a relative basis, but not doing what they should do. They are hurting. And I told you, I, I think those glory days for them are far over. I think there's plenty of problems. She has brought this uh, communist way, uh, a tightening screws down. And when things get bad, he wants to free them up. And it, the, the back and forth isn't working throughout the economy. It's a problem for them. The next thing we saw was Moody's came in and downgraded a bunch of U.S. banks, making very clear that they are concerned that Congress isn't going to get the budget done. Very clear that the commercial real estate property are bad, going to hurt certain banks. Got to keep your eye on that. And, of course, the portfolios of what they're doing. Then you add to that, banks have to pay out more interest. They have to advertise in order to keep depositors, and they're going to be paying out more. In some cases now, you are earning more on a short-term bank giving you that money than you are paying on mortgages. I don't recall that in a long time. So just gives you an idea where you're at. Now, as for where we're at, I want you to remember that I did a special report, and all this fits right in with it, on the stock indices and where they typically move and how they go from now right into December. And it's on a day-by-day -day basis. So I'm going to cover the 20-year-plus uh, numbers, the 15-year-plus number, and the five years. So there'll be three lines on the chart. I'll explain them, how they work, where you're at, what history has done, what we should be looking for. Then I review for you the strongest and weakest months of the year coming up, what's left, and where we're at on all that. So if you'd like to get it, a couple of ways. If you need to talk to somebody, call my staff, but you shouldn't. You can move your cursor to the top anywhere up here. You'll see an icon, give it a click. If that doesn't work because you're on a mobile phone, iraepstein.com, and when you open up the website, take a look at the very top right. You'll see the word research, give it a click, and then you'll see this report. It comes off tomorrow. My reports are only up ideally for three business days. So that's the way I design them. That's the way I want to do it. And that gets you to come look at them when you should instead of, oh, I'll get to it. You know, there was something there three weeks ago. I think I'll go look at it. Nah, nah, this isn't the library. So enjoy, and I, I hope you like what you see there. I was thrilled to see Rivian and how well it's doing. Uh, that's one of the things I've been looking at, as you know. And I like Rivian a lot. I like their cars. I like their trucks. Uh, the drivers seem to like everything that's going there. And yes, they're not a profitable company, but they're going to hit over 50,000 units that they're going to be able to put out. Uh, they're getting their cost structure down. They're not yet at the point of profitability, but they're getting there. And I think they're making great strides. So, you know, today the market on the news fell 2%. Well, it's only gone up dramatically, what, the whole summer. So why not pull back? The other one traders are talking about is AMC. And on AMC, uh, you know, their problem is very simple. What are they going to do for more funding? I don't know how their APE AP uh, case in front of courts is going to work. Either way they go, they got to dilute shareholders. So I, I'm not keen on that. They're hanging at the $5 mark. Yes. I have somebody write, oh, Ira, look at, look at, uh, AMC, folks, it's near the lows. Number two, this is their best time. This is the best AMC's probably done COVID plus. And their problem is this Barbie and Oppenheimer are done. Now what do you do after this? Done meaning where's the follow-ups? They're out. And the kids go back to school. And now you've also got the actor strike with the screenwriters. How long is that hole going to work? And if it's too long, what do you do down the road? So, no, I am not a, a fan favorite. I still think AMC is a $2 stock or so. So we'll see if I'm right or wrong. Can it get a bounce here to eight? All the time because of that ape stock, that, that other class of stock. Barring that, I think they'll have to uh, do more 
fundraising before it's said and done. Okay, Netflix, tra-la. All righty, well, look at how this chart peaked and came on down. It's not a gap. There is no gap in the chart per se, all right? The market uh, has just repriced from the 480 level very quickly to 438, and it seems to be comfortable there. It's not trending. It has a lower and low, higher high. It is fighting a major battle at what I call the line in the sand. Let me define. The 18-day average of closes, by the way, some of you might use the 20, you might use the 21. Whatever that main average you use is, you will see markets often test it, go to trends, you'll get it over and over in an uptrend that they'll test it. If they come down through it and establish a downtrend, it'll go back up and fight there. It rarely just slices through in that. Can it? Of course it can, but more or less you get what I'm talking about and you get it over and over. You've got to learn to pay attention. What it defines, and that's why I call it the line in the sand, is when you're under it, you have a, at least I would teach, you have a bearish bias. When you're over it, you should have a bullish bias. That bias is a filter on other technical studies you might have. And as those studies come in, you look to go with the market positive or negative. That's basically what I look at over and over and over. And it's the first thing I look at on a chart and then everything else comes alive. When I take a look at Bollinger Bands, they're far away. When I look at where the market was, it was oversold, it's corrected it. For the moment, it has an upside bias as it's over the 18-day average of closes, barely, but over it, and not trending. Higher highs, lower lows, so not very interesting. Rivian hitting the lower Bollinger Band acting good. But remember, this is a stock that was just coming off that near $28 level. And for the longest time, you could have bought this in the neighborhood here of easily $15. So it's been a heck of a ride back up in it. And yes, it's due to give some of that back, just the way it's going to work. And that's what you're doing right now. I don't understand why the gasoline fund has done that over and over on us a few times. It's not us it, that's coming from the, the quote provider. It's not the charting software. In XLF, a higher high, lower low. You can see momentum down. Are you trending? No. You're trying to stay caught in the Bollinger Bands. This is the financial services. You know, one part of me likes it because interest rates are high and you make money on services. The other part says, I don't know, are people going to be doing anything? That becomes the next part. In the industrial sector, we had this phenomenal rally that just sort of petered out in the economy. And that's where you're at right now. You're caught in no man's land. What do I mean? You're caught between these Bollinger Bands that have suddenly narrowed in again. Now, admittedly, you haven't hit the top band. You've hit the bottom and you keep going back to the 18-day average for the resistance. My guess, and it's no more than that, is if the market got itself and closed over the 18-day average, it would have trouble at the upper Bollinger Band because that's what it's been doing. So it's really trying to go sideways and buy time. I think it's a boring market, but if, it, you know, if it's going to break out to the downside, it's easier than the upside. In the video, is the chart saying, I'm tired? A bit. A bit. They announced today a brand new chip that's going to be a breakthrough chip. Starts production, I think, 2024. And it's going to be the fastest they've ever done. And instead of the market rallying on the news, it stayed down. Now, admittedly, the, it got as low today as 440.56. And it closed about mid-range in the day. So it did get a boost from that. But to prove it's going anywhere, I don't think it can do it right now. You're going to say, what do I mean? Again, look at how narrow the Bollinger Bands have got. Look at how the market's paying attention to the 18-day average, just like the chart before it. Back and forth here. I just think you're caught in this action. Could you break out to the downside? Yeah, you, you could. Then who knows where you'd go, 355? I don't think so, but anything's possible. The chart is tired. New money I don't think should be deployed there. In coin, this was a cover short day yesterday, in my opinion. Hit the Bollinger Band, oversold, that's what I think took place. In housing, as I taught you here, 
you get these bands that widen, and when they start getting real narrow sideways, pick up your chips and run. You don't belong in the market there. You're hoping, I know, you're gonna tell me it's gonna break out one way or the other, and I'm gonna go, really? Why? Give me the reason why, okay? I wanna know it. Uh, the, the, the building season isn't coming to an end, we know that. Mortgage rates are high, people are still buying the homes, but it doesn't look like the home builders are getting a lot done right now. That's something I'm looking at. In the energy sector, each challenge right now of the 200 day average in gray, see it right here, this line, and the 18 should find the support in the market. The problem the market has is, is it gonna hold on to the embedded reading? It's not a problem until it loses it. So I think the pros are buying the market there. I think they'll bail if the red line closes under 79. I think they'll take money off the table if it gets to the upper Bollinger Band and hold the balance until they lose that uh, and get that 79 reading. In the gold market, in fact, in all the metals, I wrote today in my report, this is where I think the pros are covering shorts, all of them. You. I understand will tell me silver's going lower, it's under the 200 day average, the Bollinger Band. I'm not in your camp. I'm not also saying it's gonna bottom here. I don't wanna play. Why? Because the odds of staying under that band 5%, forget it. First challenge of a 200 day average and it's just gonna let go of something that takes a year to accomplish there? No, I don't, I don't think I wanna play that game either. Copper, this is the short cover area, the Bollinger Band. Was I surprised today you got down to it and gave a bounce? No, but there's nothing bullish on the chart. I think the pros could still sell it at 40.05, but there's one thing you gotta be aware of. China likes to do things over the weekend. And at any point they could announce some property scheme that they come up with or infrastructure scheme. Just keep that in the back of your mind. But right now the bears are in control of the market. This was an area that I think profit taking was taken but I think the bears are still gonna sell the market. China either does something or it doesn't. It's put up or shut up, one or the other. TLT, higher lows, higher highs. A certain amount of short covering, certain amount of fear today. Oh, Moody's is hurting everybody's ratings. What's that gonna do in the marketplace? Stock market down four, 500, five, 400 this morning plus, took back everything it made yesterday. You got some bids. Where'd you close near the day's low? Market's not buying into, oh, it's time to just run. In the dollar, it's been strong. Hey, it wins by default right now. It's got everything going for it. We'll see how well it does when we get this week's Thursday CPI, PPI report on Friday. That's gonna be the telltale numbers I wanna see. And you keep going down and finding support at the Bollinger Band 100 day average in FXE, really not going anywhere one way or the other. So you put it together, you try to come up with some game plans. I know in the energies today, I was telling people in my subscriber video to buy the oil. And if you wanna know more, if you look here on YouTube and you go to the bottom right, you see where that blue button is? That's how you can see the morning subscriber videos if you wanna do it and stay on YouTube. I'm I. Rapstein, you have yourself a great day and I will see you all tomorrow.